Welcome back to another edition of Myth Badger Videos. Let's take a look at the cam and follower we built in a previous video and understand the mechanics of how it works. Now this one is a little bit different and let's briefly say this is our cam and this is our follower and it's important to remember which one is which. Now based on that, which of these two do you think would be the input? If you predicted that this is the input, you would be correct. While you cannot see the handle, which is right here on the back side, the fact that this one's called a follower kind of hints that this is the output as opposed to the input. So um, that's important to note here. On this, we also want to take a look at the type of motion. This is a different system than what we've seen in some other gears. And one of the reasons why is because the type of motion is actually changing. In our input, we actually have rotary motion, meaning it's moving in a circle. But our output is actually moving up and down in a straight line, and it's doing it repeatedly, which means that instead of linear, this is actually reciprocating motion, which is a little different. On top of that, we also want to look at the amount of times that this moves. This does not use gear ratio in the traditional sense. Instead, we count how many times the follower moves up and down for each rotation of the cam. In this case, one full rotation of the cam moves the follower up and down one full time. We could almost argue one to one as a gear ratio, but that's not really the proper way to look at it because this we're not calculating it based on number of teeth or diameter. We're actually calculating it based on the amount of reciprocating movement. So um, if we were to redesign this, it is possible to make cam and follower systems where this moves up and down multiple times for every full rotation of the cam. But that would require a different cam. So now let's take a look at our flow of power. Now remember, flow of power means can I make the system work by manipulating the output. So for that case, what it means is if I were to push, lift this up and push back down, will I make this rotate? So what do you think is going to happen? Okay, let's give it a shot and see. So lift it up and then push back down. Up, down. We notice here that for once we've actually got a gear in which the flow of power is not reversible. I cannot make this system work by manipulating the follower. So that means the flow of power again is not reversible. We also want to look at the direction of travel here. So starting at this spot, can I turn, I'm going forward this way, but can I go backwards and make this system work? Why don't you make a prediction? If your prediction is that the direction of travel is not reversible, you would be correct. So I'm turning forward here, but what happens if I go backwards? It starts working, but then I reach this point and it can't go any further because this wall on the cam is preventing this from moving. So this system also has a non-reversible direction of travel. Okay, so we see that the cam and follower has some differences compared to gears like the simple gear or the chain drive. And it's actually got some unique differences. The shape of the cam defines the amount of times that the follower will move up and down. We see that the flow of power and the direction of travel are both non-reversible. And we also see that the type of motion changes between the input and the output. So that makes this gear kind of a unique and interesting gear to play with. As I've said before, I really like this one because there's so many cool applications that you can use this for. And because if you get a 3D printer or if you can find some other gear uh, cam sizes, you can begin making some interesting systems just by designing different shaped or different size cams. So thank you for watching today. Feel free to hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of our other videos in the gear series or any other tutorial that we post here at MythBadger Videos.